Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today, kind of an exciting and unexpected day if I'm going to be real honest with you. Before I went to bed last night, I saw a video pop up in my feed from Mitch Bergsma. It was a premiere that was scheduled to go live this morning about the GoPro Hero 9. I figured it was coming. I had not read anything up on it or anything like that, but I did see his video first thing this morning and a couple of others. But as with a lot of the videos like this, it was a review. It was a long-term, here's all the features and everything about it, without showing you what comes in the package or without showing you initial thoughts and impressions. I think he did a follow up video later in the day with some comparisons with the other GoPros he's got, which is awesome, but I wanted to try it out for myself. I'm not sure if I've even mentioned it on the channel before, but I have used the GoPro Hero 5. I had the GoPro Hero 7, both great cameras. I have the Hero Session here somewhere. Yep, Hero Session. I had it over on the same shelf. All of these cameras have served me really well, especially for vlogging and action stuff. I am not terribly action-y, as you can probably tell, but I definitely used the little Hero Session a ton when I used to do daily vlogs over on my second channel, so I'm curious to see how this one has changed. I'm curious to see what makes it better and special and unique. The first thing I'm noticing, it doesn't have that same old, same old packaging, which is amazing. The previous GoPros had this big plastic shell on the top and it was really awkward to open. This looks like it's got some very thin cardboard and some sort of a carrying case. I see there's a tab on the bottom I can pull to open the whole thing up. It should probably just let it all out. Look at that. Nice and simple. I guess I'm getting a little ahead of myself, right? So here are some of the things that make the Hero 9 Black special and unique. 20 megapixel sensor, big step up there. 5K 30 video and 4K 60 video. 33 feet waterproof, that's no real difference, but 1080p live streaming, and I believe you can even use it as a webcam. All kinds of new fun stuff here on the side, like I mentioned the 5K 30, 4K 60, eight times slow-mo, time warp 3.0, hyper smooth 3.0 to be even smoother than ever. A big old touchscreen on the back, as well as a smaller screen on the front. Let's see what comes in this box. This is a really nice little handy carrying case. GoPro branded and everything. Here we go. So up at the top. You get your documentation. I'm gonna say it again. This is a really nice way to package and provide your product. You see a lot of this kind of thing from DJI with their small drones, but usually not with an action camera. So that's awesome. So again, documentation and instructions, a USB-C cable, relatively short, a 3M sticky buckle clip with a curve to it so that presumably you can put it on a helmet, the battery, which is significantly larger. Here you can see it side by side compared to the battery from the Hero 7. And you can see there the battery from the Hero 7, 1220 milliamp hours, 1720 on the new one. So that should be a pretty significant improvement of battery life, although we've got more screens, larger screens, maybe not. Then we've also got the other half of the GoPro clip here, a little rubber piece to help you lock it in place, and the screw mount, you just put through like this, nice and simple. And finally, of course, the GoPro Hero 9. I'm gonna go ahead and peel all of this plastic off. There's even protectors on the lens. And on the front facing screen, and just in case you're curious, nothing else down in the box here. So really, this is nice for having it as a divider and for keeping everything sort of safe and separate. But if you wanted to, you could take it out and pop more batteries and more cables and memory card readers and everything else in here if you wanted to. And this does mention that it is recyclable. So if you don't end up using this, recycle it. Now taking a quick look at the camera, you can see here the lens. Unlike the Hero 8, the lens on this new version is removable. Don't think, yeah, it is removable like that. Everybody I'd seen made it look like it was very difficult to get it off, but I say that and then I can't get it off. There we go, gave it a little twist and it popped off. So it's just got these two clips on the side that it's actually attaching to. And the nice thing about this is they're making this even modular because you can remove this lens cover and replace it with, I think, a 360. Not exactly 360, obviously, but taking advantage of some of the software stabilization and mixing it with a wider angle lens adapter, you'll be able to flip the camera around 360 degrees and have it maintain orientation, which is really cool. But back to the camera, we do have a large color LCD here on the front. I believe I saw that this is where the microphones will drain. So if you get water on the camera or anything, water will come out of this part. But you do have the power button here with the nine black branding. On the bottom, you have these flip out legs. Again, just compared to the Hero 7, no flip out legs. Hero 5, again, no flip out legs. On the top, we have the record button, very large protruding record button, and presumably microphone, large LCD screen on the back with GoPro branding. And then if I pull down on this, that pops out. This is where the battery and the SD card will go. So while we're in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the battery in place. Push it in, and then I happen to have a micro SD card on me, so I'll pop that in as well. Not too big of a deal. I actually just cut my fingernails two days ago, so the fact I was able to get that in and get it back out, that's 
that's working pretty well. And also here's your USB-C port. And then to close this, I believe we just push it back down till it clicks in. Whereas with most of the other ones, the battery door and everything was on the bottom. So you had to pop it open like this and then push it back down and make sure everything snapped in. Wasn't too difficult, but with the Hero 9, you're just gonna pop it open like that and then really firmly push it back closed. There's no bring it down and over and up and anything like that. And I think without any further ado, let's go ahead and power it on. See what it takes to move around. Oh, that's a loud beep. See what it takes to navigate the interface. So it says GoPro. It's asking what language, English. Zoom in a little bit here, might get a little dark. By using this, I agree to the terms of service. Uses GPS, sure. GoPro app, install the GoPro app to finish the setup. Not a huge fan of that, but I have gotten used to it. And luckily I do have the GoPro app installed. And actually I didn't do anything. It says GoPro would like to use Bluetooth, but it already says here, welcome to the Hero 9 family. So presumably it's already detected that. Seamless sharing, share a link to your content straight from GoPro Cloud. It looks like it didn't actually find anything. I'm guessing it's just when they updated it. There we go. It says found your GoPro, so we'll connect to the camera. Bluetooth pairing request, beep, beep, beep. And it looks like we have a low battery. Yeah, if you can see that up here in the corner, it says 7%, so we're not gonna get a whole lot done. We can change the camera name. I'm gonna leave it like that. And there's an update available that it's downloading. Gotta love those day one firmware updates. I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready so that it can hopefully start charging because I don't have a spare battery. I don't have an external charger. The batteries from the Hero 7 and 5 will not work with this. We'll go ahead and update the camera. I do have it plugged into USB at this point, but you can't really see it. So new features, in-camera horizon leveling through a new digital lens called Linear Plus Horizon Leveling. Support for the Max Lens Mod. That's the mod I mentioned where you would screw off the lens and then put this new one on. Support for Media Mod with audio metering. That's one of the reasons I was looking into the Hero 8 was I was interested in the Media Mod, but then it kind of fizzled. It's like it came out way too late. I saw that the media mod was up for pre-order, so I may look into that. Also support for the display mod, introduces webcam mode, hindsight. Hindsight sounded like a really interesting feature. That's where it can capture 15 or 30 seconds before you actually hit the button so that you don't miss those really important moments. So nice to see that that's in the right out of the box firmware update. And then scheduled capture, which again, if you leave it plugged in and you want it to just wake itself up at six o'clock in the morning to capture the sunrise, you can do that. If you want to set it to go at like eight o'clock at night to capture sunset, you can do that. Whatever time the sun sets. I'm in a basement. I don't tend to see sunrise, sunset, or anything else. And bug fixes, screensaver options, all kinds of fun stuff. Run the update. That's a lot to accept and continue. And it says the battery is too low. So unfortunately, I was hoping to finish this up tonight. I'm going to have to let the battery charge overnight because it is, wow, it's really late. I know you were able to see the time on my phone. It's like 10 p.m. I'm old, leave me alone. So I'm gonna let this charge up overnight and tomorrow when I get some time, I will finish this up and we'll take it out and do some test videos and everything like that with it. I'm dying to see the stabilization. All right, next day we are back, battery charged, everything updated. So now when I power on the camera, you can hopefully see what it says here on the back of the camera. It says we have two hours of record time. We have 91% battery remaining. I did do the firmware update earlier with it not plugged into the charger. We are currently in video mode. We should be able to switch just by swiping across like that, swiping back, or by tapping the power button to switch modes. See that there, that goes to the three commonly used ones. We have the snail button over here, which sets it into slow-mo. So now it's gone into 120, take it back out of 120 for now. You got the W mode where you can go from wide to super view all the way down to linear if you wanna get very close. Wide's probably a good place to be. It says 16, 34 millimeter, tap out of that. Over here you can see the little, it's really hard to tell what that icon is, but I tapped on it earlier and it says boost on. So. I just put this down here below so you can see it. This is what it looks like with boost on at 1080p 60. Tap on it again. You can see there's a lot more room there. So whenever you tap on it to do that, it adds a little bit of extra boost, but it also zooms in quite a bit. Speaking of which though, if I tap on this button in the bottom right, that's the zoom button. Because this is a 5K sensor, you can actually zoom in quite a bit. 2x if you're in 1080p mode. If I tap on this, we can change the mode that we're in. So right now, 1080p, you can switch to these other modes that are predefined, or you can hit plus to define your own modes. So video, looping, or slow-mo. So the other one I think we saw was looping. And then you pick all the settings that you want for that particular mode and save it. I will admit, I would kind of prefer to be able to just tap on this and be able to change on the fly, but it's not really a big deal to modify these. But then also you should be able to swipe down. There's a button over here, which I believe is for, yes, current language. This is for voice commands. You have the beep, turn on and off. I definitely turn that off immediately. That's why it's not been on. The rabbit icon here. 
That's for quick capture. You can press and start just by hitting the capture button. There's the lock button to lock the screen. There's a grid you can turn on and off. Front screen options, so you can either have full screen, the actual screen, status, or off. I think I would prefer actual screen. Orientation, you can have it locked or all. And then there's the max mode, which would be if you had the additional lens for it. Then if we swipe over, connections for Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, and then preferences, general voice control displays, mods and all of that. So the menus have definitely gotten a little more involved than the last time I used a GoPro. And unfortunately, I'm just not seeing it yet or it doesn't exist. I'm not seeing an option to directly change the filming mode other than just clicking this. What I'm saying is I would like the ability to be able to tap the screen and say, oh, I don't want 1080, I want 4K. I don't want 60, I want 30. But instead I have to create another mode ahead of time and get everything set up. I don't know, feels a little bit clunky. At this point, let me get some video and photo samples and we'll wrap up. So here's a quick sample, 5K, 30 frames per second, using the GoPro Hero 9 Black. I am immediately noticing on the front facing screen, I, I do have it set to the actual view so I can see exactly what I'm seeing around me, but the screen is very choppy. So it's, it's like three frames a second or something ridiculous like that. Perfectly fine, realistically speaking, it's just a little bit distracting, but there you go. This is what it looks like in my studio setup with my bright lights on. And this is what it looks like with the lights off. So I wanted to try out some low light so you can see that it is definitely a lot harder to see. I have a bright light in the background there. If I turn around, you can see all the stuff in the background. I've got it set to wide so you can see everything. But uh, even in this lighting, it looks good on the tiny screen. It's gonna be really hard to tell how it's going to look in reality. Uh, and I'm curious to see how well the stabilization works, so I'm going to kind of wiggle it around a little bit and see if that stabilization helps. I believe I do have the Hyper Smooth turned on. I should probably go check that though. All right, just another test. As it turns out, the 5K30 I had on before was just using the Hyper Smooth on. It wasn't actually using anything above that, so there's a second level called High, and that's what I've got it on now. This is 5K30, again, walking around here in my basement. I'm gonna kind of wiggle it a little bit. I did also change the front screen so that instead of using the actual view, it's using the zoomed in view. Still, only getting a few frames per second. It didn't seem to make any difference at all, so, I'm very curious about that because other cameras like the Insta360, which I have right here, and the Osmo Action, they both have no real problem showing it on the front. Although the Osmo Action did have trouble with a lot of lag at the beginning, so maybe this is the same kind of issue that they faced. But yeah, just walking around, going sort of back and forth between dark areas and light areas of the room to test out the stabilization and the low light capabilities. And now because I'm curious, I saw that there was an option for linear plus horizon leveling. So this should be significantly more zoomed in than it was just a minute ago. This is not the wide angle it was on, but I've also got horizon leveling. So if I tilt this, it's supposed to be able to deal with that. I don't know how much it can handle. So I'm just going back and forth. You might be able to see my elbow moving. I'm curious though how much, if anything, it's going to be able to correct that. Let's just see. And just so you can kind of see it here, I'm moving around in front of the screen. You can kind of see from the second angle just how delayed and how slow this screen is. That's pretty significant. Now just a quick walk around in the backyard. I have both the GoPro Hero 7, which you can see here, and the Hero 9. So the Hero 7 does have some stabilization built in. The Hero 9 stabilization should be significantly better. Now we've got them both facing toward me. Hopefully in the 7 I'm framed up appropriately. In the 9, I can definitely tell that everything's framed up appropriately. These are also both set to wide. The Hero 9 is set to 5K 30 frames per second wide. The Hero 7 I've got 4K 24 frames per second. The Hero 7 I've got 4K 24 frames per second. And we've got some background noise to throw in there. Got some dogs barking. But we'll just try some different sort of lighting as I move around here. I'm backlit, the sun is right over there as you can see. It looks like the Hero 9 is handling it like a champ. Let's just get me right in front of it. There you go, we'll block out the sun with my big old head. So anyway, just a quick walking around. I would run around to really test the stabilization, but I hurt my knee last night, so not going to be running anywhere. Just walking back and forth at a pretty reasonable pace to see how these handle it. And the funny thing is, the linear stabilization I tested earlier definitely works a lot better than it looks like it's working on camera. 
Although one thing I should go ahead and mention on the Hero 9, with the latest firmware update, the 1.21 I mentioned earlier, it apparently disables anything audio control related. Meaning if I hook up the external 3.5mm adapter I have from the Hero 7, will not work currently. They're working on a software update for that. It's supposed to be out in November version 1.5, but for the time being, what you've got is what you've got. And when they release their media mod, hopefully that will work better. But realistically, I paid like $50 for that external adapter. I'm not buying another one that may or may not work. And the front screen just turned off because I've been talking too long. Anyway, there's some good outdoor testing for you from both the Hero 7 and the Hero 9. And we're back for a quick moment to go ahead and wrap things up. Wow, that last test was very telling, wasn't it? So I'm a little bit confused. Looking at just the Hero 7 versus the Hero 9, the test that I just did, I thought the audio actually kind of sounded better out of the Hero 7. The Hero 9 seemed to go a bit back and forth. Sometimes it was really good sounding, very rich, deep sound. Sometimes it was kind of muffled and off to one side, so it's like the microphone might be, well, it's not wet. It's a brand new camera. I haven't done anything with it other than just stick it on a tripod. So that's a little confusing. Maybe there will be updates in the firmware to fix some of those. The picture quality though, there was so much more saturation to the image I was seeing out of the Hero 9, and I've checked, and the Hero 7 is up to date. One thing I definitely appreciate out of the Hero 9 is having this door with everything accessible on the side. Having to have two separate doors on the 7 where you pull one down to get to all of your plugins, your inputs, and then you open the bottom of the camera to get to the battery and the SD card. That was a mistake of design, although I will admit, I had this cage from back when I had the Hero 5. It continued to work on the Hero 7, would have worked on the Hero 8, definitely will not fit the Hero 9 because it's a significantly more chunky body. And this was a really nice cage, so I might have to find something similar for the Hero 9. But I guess, let me know what you think of the video quality, the difference, the stabilization, the little bit that I've tested it. There's not a huge difference for just everyday walking around. For more action-y stuff, I'm sure the Hero 9 is going to be amazing. And that linear plus horizon leveling, I was doing this. That's awesome. I definitely love that feature. And I would actually be tempted to give the Max Mod lens a, a try as well. Being able to pop this off and pop on a, a lens that would let me just spin this around and have the footage stay level. That's really cool. Although the Insta360 camera can do all of that with anyway. The image on both of them also seemed to really smooth out my features. It made it look like there was a beauty filter on, which is a little weird. But one way or the other, to have a camera this small that can do as much as this can do. 5K30, 4K60, underwater, flip out legs, ridiculously smooth stabilization. And I think I paid $450 for it, but then immediately after I got home with it, I saw that there were deals on it for like $350 from GoPro if you pay for a year of their service. I think the holiday season for this, this is going to be one of the items to take a look at. So I will put together some links that you can take a look at down in the video description. They will be affiliate links. So if you do purchase from there, I do get a little bit of a kickback and I definitely appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for watching. No one else to thank because I paid for this out of pocket. If you like the video, I hope you'd consider leaving a thumbs up. Let me know that you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already, if you want to get notified when new videos do become available. And I'll see you again next time.